Hey, Phil. Uh, Scott Cowan with Sports Illustrated. Um, I, I guess probably the biggest surprise uh, through the first couple of games is uh, your defense being seventh in pass uh, against the pass with only 227 yards a game. Uh, just kind of speak to the level of confidence that you have in your secondary and then also how much the defensive line, that front seven play in that pass defense. You know, any time that you play good, whether it be the run or the pass, you know, 11 people have got to be a part of it. So, um, you know, we're getting better each week. Um, hopefully that continues this week. And I, I think it's just um, we're starting to get comfortable in the package and the guys are getting more confidence in themselves and with each other. Um, they're starting to communicate with each other better. And, and then, you know, we're getting um, – the last two games, we've got a lot more pressure on the quarterback. And so all those things factor into playing good pass defense. Hey, Coach, J.B. Ricks here from Spectrum News One. Uh, thanks for taking out the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Chen um, got rave reviews, you know, in training camp, and it seems like it's translating well through these first uh, four games of the season, and he's also getting high praise from fellow players throughout the league. Um, we see what he's doing right on the field, but can, can you give us some insight to what he's doing behind the scenes or maybe in film study or whatever it may be that we don't know about that that's allowing him to be so successful this early in his career? Well, you know, Jeremy, you know, he acts and, and uh, does things a lot older than his age. Um, you would think he's a veteran. I mean, he comes in um, like this morning. I was here early and he was he was here early. Uh, eating breakfast before very, very few players were in the building. So, um, you know, that, I think that's unique in that, you know, he's, he's a rookie and um, he really knows how to handle himself and study. And, and I, you know, I think that's a tribute to how he's been raised and brought up um, at home and in football. So I think the college coaches did a great job with him. So um, there's a lot of positives, Jeremy. And uh, I mean, he's a great guy to have in our locker room. Let's go to Jason Huber and then Mike Salarte. Hey, Phil. I uh, hope you're doing well. I I'm wondering what has been the biggest difference for Derek Brown from weeks one and two to, to now, you know, four tackles for loss in these last two weeks. Just what have you seen that's kind of been that big improvement? Well, I think he's getting off every play now and he's using his hands a lot better. So he's recreating the line of scrimmage by getting off on the snap. Um, and then, you know, he's a big, powerful man. He's using his hands much better. So yeah, you're, you're seeing that productivity now because of that. Hey coach, Mike Salarte, Spectrum News One. Good to see you again. The, uh, the fact that you guys have gotten pressures the last couple of weeks, more pressures on the, on the quarterback, especially last week with a guy as mobile as Kyler Murray was, you're removing some, well, Atlanta's removing some of that with Matt Ryan. He does not move like Kyler Murray. Is this advantage defense or are you guys still kind of have to be wary because they, if they block it up right, he can, he can throw the ball deep. Yeah, he sure can. Uh, you know, he, Ryan, he, he, he's an old pro now. He knows exactly what's going on out there. And, and, um, but again, if you don't pressure him, you're not going to have much success against him. So, um, you know, there's the, the catch 22 and, you know, hopefully we have the right mix. All right, we'll go to Miles Simmons and then David Newton. Hey, Phil. Um, you sort of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but just how much do you think you know, getting to know your guys a little bit better and just watching them play in the first few weeks of the season has helped you understand what their strengths are and, and be able to scheme with that? Yeah, you know, I think it helps a lot. Um, and not only – Am I getting used to them? They're getting used to the system and, and what we do. So, um, as you, you know, if you come to practice, you can see that we're growing in confidence every day. And, and so, you know, I hope that continues and, and that happens when you have success. So the better we get, the more confidence they'll get. So, um, I'm hoping that continues this Sunday. Hey, Joe, David Newton here. Wanted to ask you, uh, and I asked Matt this yesterday, um, why do you think teams are scoring at such a high rate? They're on a record pace with 51.3 points a game combined. Um, the defensive guy, what are you seeing? Well, I think the biggest reason is, you know, normally offensively when you go on the road, it's really hard to run an offense, especially on third down or if you have to check, um, you know, with the crowd noise. Well, we're not having any crowd noise. So, I, you know, when teams go on the road, they're not on at a disadvantage on – on offense. 
And, you know, we count on that on defense, you know, when you play at home. We count on that crowd noise where they can't get to what they want and, and, and it's hard to run their offense. And we don't have that right now. So I think that has led to some of the scoring. Go to Joe Person and then Jonathan Alexander. Phil, good to see you. I hope you're well. I uh, was going to ask you about the uh, kind of cornerback rotation you had. You thought you had Eli back last yeah. week, and then you didn't. Um, are you a little kind of, I, I guess, uh, maybe cautious about wanting to disturb what's been a, a good thing with Dante and Rasul? Yeah, you know, I think both of them have played real well. So, and, But, you know, Troy's come in and played uh, just fine. I mean, he's you, for a young rookie, he's doing fine. So uh, we've got a good little rotation. Um, it does hurt a little bit that Eli got nicked again, but you know he'll he'll be back, and so we're we're doing fine. Hey Phil, um, hope all is well. Um, you know, we talked with a couple of your players uh, who you know said you were a traditional coach. Um, I'm wondering, what is your philosophy as a coach and um, what has in, what or who has influenced that philosophy? Well, you know, basically we talk about, um, um, you know, everybody wants to talk about scheme and how you do things and all those things. And we talk about physicality and how hard we play and the details in which in what we do. I, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So if we're really detailed of what we do and we play really fast and physical, then I think, you know, you're going to play pretty good on defense. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate at my age that I got really um, – Back in the old days, that's what that's what football was all about. There wasn't all the scheme, so it was about hard nose, physical, tough football. Play hard, as hard as you can, and be detailed at what you do. And so, I still think that, you know when you look at a game, the issue isn't the opponent; it's you. And so, if we can concentrate on those things and play better at those things, practice that way, then we have a chance to play well. And that's kind of our emphasis. And, and who influenced um, your your thinking? Well, just through the years, you know, I had Jim Kreiner at Boise State. You know, even, even um, I I worked for Jack Delbar in high school. He he was the same way. You know, all the coaches all the way through. Um, uh, Bruce Snyder was really influential on me. You know, I worked for him for fourteen years. But all the coaches, you know, and, and um, they, they they didn't lose sight of what the game was. And now, you know, everything is scheme and and all that. And, and, you know, you've got to schematically be right. But a lot of the other stuff that you have to do is the old school ball, which is be physical and play hard and, and really be detailed. And, and you get that through practice. The harder you practice, the better you're in, in the better you practice, the better you're going to play. So that's kind of our, you know, what we try to get done. All right, let's go. Yeah, Steve, you can ask your question. And then we'll go to Miles Simmons. Hey, Phil, obviously you knew, um, that the rookies were going to have to contribute for you. What was the approach? And, and and they played really well so far. What was the approach that you took with, you know, kind of bringing these guys along, teaching them the scheme? Um, I don't know. Did it take extra patience? Did it take limiting the playbook? How did you get these guys to play so well so quickly? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is having no excuses. Um, you know, guys make excuses while I'm playing with rookies. And I told the guys coaching them that in the National Football League, if you draft a guy in the second round, third round, fourth round, first round, they're going to play, and they need to play right away. So we took that approach. Um, and, you know, I've stressed to them, the, the other team doesn't care who you are playing. They don't care if you have a rookie. Um, so we've just taken that approach, and I think the guys have grown up fast, and I think our vets have done a nice job of bringing them along and teaching them how to play and play at this level. So uh, the combination of all that, and I, and, and you're right. I'm, you know, the, uh, the four rookies were playing uh, and we're playing some other rookies too, like Sam Franklin. And um, you know, I'm, I'm real happy with the progress. Phil, uh, what, how, if at all, does it affect you guys if Julio Jones doesn't play? Well, it does. I mean, he's Julio's really a good player and, and, you know, he's, you got to know where he is all the time. And really what it affects you is how you play the run because you, you start stacking the box and then you got big 11 out there that's going to, you know, they're just going to throw the football to one-on-one. -on -one. So he affects the whole football game. So it does affect, I don't care what defense you are, it affects you. 
All right, guys, we have time for two more. So let's go to Elena and then finish with Mike Salarte. Hey, Phil. Um, I was wondering, you know, someone we haven't really talked about a lot is Justin Burris. So I was curious, you know, what has been your assessment of his play through the first four games and what have you liked and, you know, what maybe does he need to improve on? You know, if you look at his uh, background and history, he's been really a corner. And so he's evolved into the safety position the last two years. And so, like the last ball game, he really played physical. Um, he has really good cover skills. Um, he, you know, um, he matches up well on tight ends. We matched him up on Fitzgerald last week. Um, he really gives us some flexibility. But the physicality of the position, um, he's growing to to really appreciate. And last week, uh, I was really uh, really happy to see what he did uh, physically. But he's made, uh, I, you know, I'm real happy with Justin. I think he's going to really become uh, what he wants to become in this league. Coach, you just you, a few responses ago, you talked about the uh, getting off the line of scrimmage, playing hard, hard nosed football, and and having your technique as sound as can be. You've seen so many players in your career. Is there? I mean, is that what really sets the good from sets apart the good from the great and the elite? Uh, you know, guys that can play at 100 miles an hour and and be flawless in their technique, I mean, or is it, or is there more to it than that? Well, f first of all, at the, especially at this level and at any level, you have to have a certain uh, ability to play real well. But then with that, you have to have the work ethic. And it's not just the field. You got to take care of your body. You got to be good in the weight room. Um, but they come in and study. And then they practice at a certain level. There's no way you can be great and not practice at a high level. Um, you know, that's why I love that Michael Jordan's, uh, uh, that 10 part series. That's all they talked about in that whole deal. And, it, you know, it was great to have other athletes in other sports hear how hard he worked and, and how detailed he was at what he did. And um, that's what all the great ones do, all of them. 